Hey everyone, we've talked about the universe, we've talked about everything that's in the universe, we've talked galaxies. They're in the universe. They're in the universe. Galaxies made of hundreds of billions of stars, so it's time to talk about... The stars. The stars that are in yep. those galaxies. So when we look out into our solar system and we look at all the things that our solar system offers, we see the planets and we see our single solitary sun. Yes, we do. It's actually kind of unusual, though. Most of the stars aren't by themselves. So when we look out at other stars, we notice things like this. Looking in the direction of Gemini, Pollux and Castor, Castor, the one of the twins' heads, actually has more than one star in its system. It turns out that most of the time, this is what we see. If we actually see a single star, that's probably not really what's going on. So here we are at one light year from Castor. Still looks like a single point of light, but as we zoom in and move into the system here, what are we seeing? I'm seeing two stars and they are going around each other. So when we have two stars orbiting each other, we call this system what? A binary system. Binary being two. Like a bicycle. So you can see it one of the Castor binary systems is a bluish star with a small orange star that's orbiting it. And one way we can detect that it's binary is through this. Hmm. It looks like it's getting brighter and then not quite as bright over and over again. So when one star eclipses another star, we see a dip in what we call the star's light curve. And that's one way to tell that we've got two stars orbiting each other. Actually, in the Castor system, if I back out, there's another set of binaries over here. And those ones seem to be zipping around each other much, much quicker. And there's a third set of binaries right here. So it's actually a six star system having three pairs of binary stars. So with this, binary systems <clears throat> let us actually explore a lot of things. There are visual binaries like Ursa Major, we said Mizar was a binary system, and actually Sirius, the brightest star in our sky, is a binary system. So there are actually several different ways that you can find whether or not a system is a binary star system. Uh, we've already talked about one, that's when the two stars orbit each other and we can see they get dimmer and brighter or changing their light curve. A second way, we can see the red and blue shift of the stars as they move away from us and toward us respectively as they circle one another. And a third way to do it is to notice whether or not the stars are actually wobbling back and forth due to the gravitational pull of one on the other. And when binaries orbit each other, you can see that there's actually nothing in the middle. When we looked at that simulation, there was nothing in the middle of those two stars. They orbit what we call their center of mass. Yeah, so there's the kind of something in there, but it's a gravitational center of uh, attraction. No physical object right. is there. So when astronomers measure the distances from Earth to these star systems, they can use some physics and math to figure out their orbits and time how long it would take these stars to go around each other, and they can actually figure out the mass of the stars. Okay, so here we see there are sometimes more than two stars, so you don't have to just have a binary system. You have three stars, four stars, six stars. Um, this is a quaternary system, which means that four stars are trying to work their way around a center of gravity as well. And it kind of looks like a ballet, and that's what they call this, a four-star ballet. So in talking about these binaries and all these stars and all these distances, how do we even know and measure distances? So the method we're going to use here is known as parallax. And what we mean by parallax is measuring the shift in position when measuring an object from two different locations. The easiest explanation of parallax is putting your thumb straight out in front of you and opening Switch and closing eyes. your eyes. What do you see? I see, well, hey, the microphone is on the left side of my thumb. No, wait, the microphone is on the right side of my thumb, but the microphone didn't move at all. It was just the angle change from eye to eye. So we have binocular vision. Okay. We use two eyes to estimate the distance to objects. Well, we can use that same idea of measuring this tree one person sees the mountain peak, the other one sees a smaller mountain. It's because we're measuring from two different angles. And if you want to take it to a greater distance, you can do the same thing with a star. You need a, you need a very large difference in observation points 
to be able to see stars change their position with respect to your motion because it's such a great distance. The big baseline for us is the distance from Earth to Sun. That's 93 million miles, or we call that the 1 AU. That's right, astronomical unit. And that distance is our new tape measure. We lay that down. We know in January we're 93 million miles away. When else are we 93 million miles away? In July, we're 93 million miles away. So at any time, we're about that mm -hmm. distance from the sun. And now we have a baseline to measure our angles. Yeah, total distance of 93 plus 93 million. 186 million miles That's as our baseline. So big yeah. baseline. But remember, the distance to stars is even greater than that. So if we look, we see the star in July is right there in the middle of our screen. And then when we get to January, six months later, that star has shifted over. We can measure that parallax angle. And knowing the baseline and the parallax angle, we can actually use some trigonometry to get the distance. To use parallax, we can't have stars too far away. Why not? If, well, the angles of change get so small that you can no longer measure it accurately. And the distances get so great that you can no longer measure it accurately. You have to come up with other ways. And it, you can take parallax up to about 100 parsecs. Beyond that, you need to use other methods. Okay, and up to 100 parsecs, parsec is another unit of distance. 100 parsecs is about 326 light years. So from Earth-based telescopes, we can see that far away. And from space-based telescopes, we can see even further. We said things were hundreds of thousands of light years away and or millions of light years away. Parallax isn't going to work. No, it won't work at all. But what we can do is measure all the stars that are within our di close distances and then make comparisons. And that's what we're going to talk about next time.